my friends, this is Andy coming to you live from Yorba Linda, California. It's been a while since we've been talking about Falco Canine Academy. Uh, you know, uh, just to catch up a little bit on what's been going on, you know, the pandemic hit. I'm not sure if you know that, but that hit some time ago. So when that hit, um, a lot of crazy stuff happened. Again, you probably already know that, uh, but in particular with my life, um, just imagine I have five kids, four of them are in school, elementary school, junior high, um, and now after um, uh, this week, uh, they'll be going in the summer, and then I have then the two of the, of the kids in junior high will be going to, to high school. Uh, and so at that time, I'll have three kids in high school, junior high, and elementary school. Uh, five of the four of the five kids will be in those grades. So uh, imagine that happening in the pandemic where now we are all on Zoom calls. So that happened. Uh, I ended up getting COVID, uh, hospitalized for about seven days. Um, I was going to say I was left for dead. I wasn't really left for dead. Uh, they just thought I was going to die. And so, <laughs> but I didn't. After, during that period of time, I had met a fantastic woman who I eventually married uh, during this period of time. And I don't know if you all knew this, but I had cancer and just recently had surgery for the cancer. So um, uh, I, I want to tell you that because you're probably thinking, wow, it's been a long time since we've seen uh, uh, Falco canine dog talk and Andy Falco. Does he still? And I get questions all the time. You, I, I know that I have plenty of messages that I've not gotten back to yet. People asking me, do you still do dog stuff? Do you still train dogs? Uh, the answer is more or less I consult on dog related issues. Uh, not as much of the dog training, although um, I have been doing uh, uh, some dog training uh, on occasion, uh, hands on with the dogs and the, and the handlers, but more or less that it more or less has to do with co consultation. And that's nearly on a daily basis. So still in the dog world, but can you imagine all the stuff between COVID and Zoom calls and getting married and then uh, cancer? Um, uh, that's where I've been. Um, the reason I, uh, I, I, for the last couple of months, I've been thinking, what is going to be my first topic as I come back? And as the summer is, uh, was approaching, um, every year uh, about this time, uh, I like to come on and remind people uh, what's important uh, about their dog care as it relates to summer. And that is, um, uh, of course, dehydration and, oh, you know, um, and uh, just simply dying uh, from being, uh, you know, uh, overheated, dehydration and over being uh, dogs being overheated and having a heat stroke and that type of thing. And so I want to come on and, and just kind of give a reminder. Uh, the other reason I thought this was important was because the uh, during the pandemic, many people bought dogs or rescued dogs um, since they were home and, and not no longer going to work. They thought, you know what I, I need and this, especially single people. We're spending time at home. They thought a dog would be a great idea to bring into the into the home um, to keep them company since now they were home all the time. And so a huge number of dogs uh, were adopted, uh, uh, you know, rescued and purchased. Uh, and so I, I think there's a lot of first time dog owners that are out there that are probably thinking uh, as summer is approaching now that they're getting out and they're able to go for walks and go and do a lot of other things they're going to be taking their dogs with them. And so what I want to do is make sure that you remember that the dog needs to be hydrated constantly. Dogs um, hydrate themselves through panting, which causes a mist, which causes them to use more of their body fluids than probably humans do. Um, we sweat. Dogs don't have sweat glands. Dogs pant and they have to pant in order to cool themselves off. That, that's why when you see a dog who begins to get overheated, their mouth opens up really wide. Their tongue comes out because they're trying to cool off their body. Uh, you'll see dogs seeking uh, shade um, and um, will uh, sometimes you know, quit in an activity because they just are now beginning to get overheated. So I, I want to bring up a few things that I think are important to remember. It won't be every aspect of what needs to be remembered in regard to dogs, but it's gonna be pretty basic. But you know, some of us need help with just pretty basic stuff from time to time. <laughs> and so I don't have a, a problem in, in bringing that up. Hey, Amy Feltz, nice to see you. Another fantastic dog trainer uh, who's uh, joining us here. So Amy Feltz is joining us. Um, one thing I wanna tell you, and I wanna warn you, that when it comes to the heat, the heat of Texas, where Amy's from, the heat of Arizona, California, Nevada, surely, um, uh, you know, where Arizona, uh, I already, maybe I already said that, uh, New Mexico, especially those areas, Florida, where it gets super hot, you really got to take into consideration your dog. If your dog is a house dog in particular, where your dog is spending a lot of the time in the home and maybe you run them uh, every so often, or maybe you throw the ball for them. 
it really does not prepare the dog for the heat. Now we may think um, a, a dog is, a, is an animal that's like a wolf or a coyote and it just doesn't matter. You can take them out for the same mile long, two mile, five mile. Some of you jog much farther with your dogs in the winter time, but understand the way a dog operates that that depending, it's also depending on the breed, they may not be able to do that during the summer. So I want you to begin to really consciously think about your dog and that when it begins to get hot, um, they just work differently. They, they have to take probably, depending on the size of your, the dog, four or five times the steps that you have to take for the, the, the same distance. So your, you know, 10 steps uh, forward is actually a dog's, you know, 20 steps. So a dog's taking 20 steps to every one of your five. And that, that, that's not mathematically, you know, uh, perfect for your dog, but you understand that you, the dog has to take more steps to make up the same distance you are. So the dog is working harder. Um, understanding that in the, in the heat, when the temperature begins to rise, it gets in the 80s and 90s and sometimes in the 100s, uh, you may want to consider not taking your dog. It may not be the best idea to take your dog. So just be really careful on your, on your decision making when it comes to uh, taking your dog out for that jog or that hike and the temperatures are getting uh, uh, higher, that um, your breed of dog, I mean, again, this is an obvious one, but if you have a, a basset hound, <laughs> these short little legs, you know, they may be able to go someplace and, and, and walk alongside you in 60, 70 degree weather uh, and be fine for the most part, but they're not meant to go for very long walks in 80, 90, 100 degree weather. Just understand that. That's not, that dog's not built for that. All right. Belgian Malinois, German Shepherds, uh, in some cases, if they're not overweight, Labrador Retrievers, again, if they're not overweight, Golden Retrievers, a little bit farther. But again, understand that the heat is a whole different monster for dogs. Um, and so let me get to a couple of my banners here. And one of the first things I want to talk about is dehydration. Uh, dehydration uh, is, is fairly common. And I would say uh, the, over the oh, my gosh, the, the couple decades that I ran Falco Canaan Academy, I would say almost every year. I would hear of a dog in either our circles of Falco Canaan Academy or somebody who knew somebody that would say that their dog died of dehydration in the backyard. This is not very uncommon. And I wanna, I'm gonna address that first because that seems to be the most common reason people will come home from work or come home from being gone for the weekend and then find their dog dead in the backyard, um, most likely due to dehydration when it happens during the summer. And I just want you to understand one thing when it comes to, well, first, um, the sunken eyes is a sign of dehydration. If you come back and you see your dog kind of like staggering around a little bit, their eyes are sunken, their mouth is dry, gums and nose are dry, and they have poor skin elasticity. Um, you, you can recognize it fairly quickly. Your dog just kind of looks kind of like lost and confused. And then you have all these other um, uh, signs that your dog is dehydrated. One of the things that you can in the skin elasticity is that take the dog's uh, skin on the back of his neck and pull it up. So it comes up like a little uh, pyramid and then let it go. If the skin pops right back down to its uh, normal uh, position on the back of the neck, then your dog is probably okay. If you do that and then the pyramid stays and then slowly starts to go back and maybe even sometimes stalls, your dog is definitely dehydrated. Um, for the most part, if you have a sharp hay, that might be different, but depending again on the breed. Uh, another thing you can do is push on the dog's gums, push on until his gums turn white. Now there are some dogs that have some black gum, gums and that kind of stuff, but again, in general, push on your dog's gums and then when they turn white, release it. If it turns right back to pink right away, then your dog's probably okay. If it doesn't and stays white for a long period of time, then your dog is probably dehydrated. So those are some of the things you can do to find out if your dog is dehydrated. So how does this happen? Uh, first thing, sometimes people depend on bowls of water in the backyard, like a, like a bowl of, of water for the day. And when you get into the 90, 100 degrees and your dog's in the backyard, not inside the house, uh, where the air conditioner may be running. Again, if you don't have air conditioning, this could go for inside the house also. But understand a bowl is fine and dandy as long as it doesn't get tipped over. Quite often dogs will step on it as they get really um, uh, thirsty. Sometimes the dog gets in there and, and kind of gets their paws on there and it only takes a second for that, that bowl to get tipped over and all the water to pour out for the day. So be careful about depending on a bowl. Bowls are good, until they get tipped over and they run out. Understand also that we may be putting water in the bowl or have the size of bowl that works during the winter time, during again, you know, 
50, 60 uh, degree weather. But as the summer comes, your dog is drinking a lot more water. And now if the water halfway through the hot day while you're gone runs out, your dog could get very dehydrated. Some dogs don't know well enough to not, they see, you know, they're not, they're not so smart that they look in the bowl and see, you know, I, I, I only have like a quarter of a bowl left. <laughs> I'm not going to chase the uh, the neighbor dog, fence fight the dog next door. I'm not going to chase the birds that fly through the backyard because I know I only have a certain amount of water. So I'm going to, I'm going to refrain. No, dog, <laughs> dogs don't think that way. Um, they, they can run out of water, say by 10 o'clock in the morning. And then all of a sudden, the kids next door are now swimming in the pool and your dog is now running alongside the fence and just wearing himself out. He goes to try to get water and he's out of water. So the bottom line, a uh, bowl of, uh, of water is probably not the best thing to depend on. I know I went for a little, really long time. I'm trying to give you all the reasons why this happens and why I've seen it happen uh, to dogs and why they die from dehydration. So uh, one thing I wanna show you really quick, I'm gonna get rid of this banner and get rid of this frame really quick. Hello. Oh, and comment. If you wouldn't mind, comment and let me know if this is um, uh, helpful to you. If there's any questions you have about what it is I'm talking about, let me know uh, so that I can um, give you some more assistance. So make sure and comment. It really helps to have you comment because it lets me know because I can see people watching. Um, let me know if this stuff is uh, ringing true to you and, and helpful to you. So what I would recommend instead of just a bowl in the backyard, you could have the bowl. But the one thing that is it's called a lixit. If you don't know what that is, you've never heard of it. A lixit is something that attaches to the water faucet in the backyard. Every home has a faucet in the backyard. Now, if you use the faucet and have a hose on it, you can get a splitter so that you have it connected to the water faucet, right? Your hose goes to one of the Y, so it's a Y. Your hose goes to one and the lixit goes on the other. That way you don't you don't use up the, the faucet if you only have one in the back, backyard perhaps and you wanna keep the hose connected, that's okay. Just get a splitter a Y, and then put this licks it. it. It attaches directly to the faucet, just like the picture. Uh, I'm gonna share a video uh, in just one second to show you how that works. But how this works is that you put the licks it on the faucet, you turn on the faucet, and in, in most cases, it actually works out pretty good. There's no leaking. Uh, very rarely, I've used licks it for God, since I had a police dog, so 30 something years, you know, for a very long time. And uh, I've always had licks it for all the dogs in the backyard. Because, and also bowls of water. But I always wanna make sure that no matter what, even if a bowl got tipped over, they still had access to water. And what the dog does at the bottom, you see that little thing hanging out at the bottom that the dog is looking in the picture, that as that jiggles, it releases water. And so the dog can get water. So I'm gonna just share this video really quick. Let me take this down, show this video really quick. And this is, I, I had made a video, I just can't find it. So I have to borrow somebody else's. I'm not sure who this is, um, but um, hold on. I gotta make the screen a little bit bigger. And so this is what it looks like when the dog is using the Lixit. So you can see that he just hits it with his tongue and it causes more water. What he's doing is putting peanut butter on the little gadget there to get the dog to understand that when he moves it, water comes out. That's one training method. Sometimes I just take my dog up there when he's thirsty and I just move it with my finger and then the dog will see that water comes out. So there's a couple different ways of training. It's not hard. Um, once a dog learns that there's water coming out of there, then they start doing it on his own, just much like that dog. Another interesting thing that happens with dogs is that they learn, they learn to put their, um, uh, they learn to put their lip on the, on the Lixit and then move it. And then the water comes out and then the water just kind of pours in their mouth. <laughs> it's interesting how dogs figure out how to work that, uh, Lixit thing, but, um, the Lixit is a great thing. Uh, so again, that's just, it's always, it's, it's all, it's always available water. Is that the good way to say that? It makes the water that, that, that that's always available to the dog, even if the bowl were to get tipped over. So that's a great product right there. Um, Leaving a dog inside a car, even with the windows down, can quickly cause dehydration, heat stroke. Thank you, absolutely. That was my next uh, discussion point, and I'm glad you brought that up, is that uh, the, these these things that we can do during normal, um, not normal, but during, during the winter months, um, you just simply can't do during the summer. You gotta get all these bad habits. We I've seen tons of people. It's been in particularly cool weather here in California up until today, which is I think 90 degrees, something like that. Um, but, um, the um, the habit of taking your dog with you to Starbucks or to, you know, uh, whatever, Pete, Pete's or whatever it's called um, and leaving your dog in there while you're going to get a cup of coffee. And sometimes it gets really busy and they leave their dogs in the car um, that, that develops a really bad habit. And I and I wish people would stop getting into that habit. <laughs> I don't know how else to tell people it is just not 
a good habit to leave your dog in the car because you're going to think it's okay. Well, if I just do it, I know it's 90 degrees outside. I know it's 100 degrees outside. I'm just leaving my dog in the car. We get distracted. We run into somebody we know inside the store. Um, just so many things can happen. It's just either best to bring your dog out with you um, and, uh, and, and figure it out that way or just leave the dog at home. Right. You don't always need to take your dog somewhere. Uh, I, I, I've done videos on people that take their dogs on planes and they pretend that they are service animals and that kind of stuff. People are taking chickens and pigs and all kinds of stuff, sell all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't need to take your animals on the planes with you. I, I'm telling you. Um, there's great places, great dog walkers, great uh, dog sitters, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, in the summertime, especially if you've had the habit of taking your dog out with you in the car during the wintertime, reconsider taking your dog somewhere in the car where, where you are out running errands as opposed to taking your dog in the car to go to the park and, and walk with your dog or go to a place to hike with your dog or go to a dog park, whatever. That's different, of course, but taking your dog with you to run errands, I would just, again, especially during the summer, I would reconsider even when you crack the window for the dog, um, it, it gets really, really hot in that car really fast in especially these places that we live like Amy and I in Texas and in California. Uh, sometimes dog owners don't realize that the pavement gets, hey, that's my last one. Why are you uh, skipping ahead there, Amy? <laughs> I appreciate the comments, so keep them coming. All right, so let's get back to um, the protocol here. So always keep a, a water available, uh, and you can also use a Lixit or a child's plastic pool. That's another one that uh, is really good to keep in the shade. Don't keep it in the sun. Take a, a kiddie pool, you know, the, the I don't know what they are, what, 10 bucks at, uh, uh, you know, one of the major stores. A, a plastic pool, it's probably about, I don't know, six feet, something like that, five feet. It's only about this deep. You take one of those pools and you find a shady place under a tree that stays shaded almost all the time or underneath a, a patio cover. Fill that thing up with water. Another great thing uh, for your dog uh, to hang out with. Pour some ice in there if you want to. Do whatever you want to do, uh, but keep that available for your dog too so they can keep cool during the summer. Some of these they, some of these days get really, really hot. Uh, remember, our dogs are just simply not used to that kind of uh, heat uh, all the time, especially indoor dogs that sometimes end up outside for whatever reason during the summertime. Just be really careful, really cautious about what you're doing with your dogs. But a, a kiddie pool is another great thing to have out there, right? Anything that gets knocked over, like I said, a bowl. Uh, I've even, uh, for, I did a video once on a type of um, like a spark. It's just like a mini sparklets butter. It's all, all this big and it screws in to a base that has a bowl. And as, a, as the dog licks it, it um, lets in more water into the bowl area. Um, those are okay, but again, those can get knocked over unless you secure them to a wall or a door or something like that. I really like the Lixit and I really like the kiddie pool. Those two things. Keep it simple. Um, and don't get too complicated. Using those things um, are going to pretty uh, are going to keep your dog safe. In addition to a bowl of water. So I would put, if you have a bowl of water, put that out there. Get a really big bowl and then the Lixit and then a kiddie pool, and your dog should be fine. Uh, again, I've I've seen far too many dogs die because of uh, being dehydrated. All right. Um, overheating. Overheating, uh, what I'm talking about is when you're taking your dog out. Um, again, understanding that your dog has to take far more steps than you do to make the, up the same distance for the most part, unless it's a big, gigantic dog. Um, but um, we can take our dogs out for these walks and we have all kinds of water and we have, uh, you know, hats on and all kinds of things to protect us from the heat. And then uh, we have our dog kind of trying to keep up with us. If we're hiking with other people, we get into a conversation and we really begin to forget about the dog. We forget because we have a hat on that we're shaded from that and we're walking on this trail that for a large portion of the walk, maybe in the sun, your dog is probably in the sun the entire time. So here's your dog walking on the, the surface that's warm. You know, remember dogs are walking barefoot in most cases. They are uh, walking in the sun and they are taking on most of the heat where we're usually protected from the heat because what we are wearing and we're, you know, have easy access to water. All the kind. And sometimes we can forget about that dog. And in the middle of a walk, we our, our dog, we start feeling a tug on our leash. And that's because the dog is now trying to stop like and go find me some shade dimwit you you've gone too far take me somewhere what are you doing and now our dog is beginning to overheat and when the dog begins to overheat you are you can be in trouble with your dog you may have to carry your dog the rest of the walk because now your dog you, you put your dog into danger with this uh, uh you know your dog is getting overheated and, uh, and 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 could get uh it could be very very serious the, the organs begin to shut down and it's a very serious event and again if you've now hiked into somewhere are far remember you have to walk back 
it, there's quite often not uh, a quick path back and you may have to carry your dog and hurry up and get out there. So overheating uh, begins with, with, of course, panting, right? We get sometimes so used to hearing our dog panting that we begin to ignore it. And then we don't hear it again until it gets into where it's a really noisy breathing. So panting followed by disorientation and fast, noisy panting, uh, breathing, uh, collapsing or convulsing, bright red or blue gums, vomiting and diarrhea. Their ears, especially on the German Shepherd, you can see their ears begin to turn really pink and sometimes red. Uh, when they begin to get in that dehydration, you again are in trouble. And so you have to be mindful of your dog when you're on these walks, especially when the heat gets up there uh, and stop often for your dog. Don't forget about the dog. Again, walking on the hot surface in the sun, you're not, you're not going to recognize it uh, probably as soon as you possibly can. Your dog will need time to rest and stop in the shade and to get some uh, some some water into their system, get rehydrated. So be very, very careful. Take um, some stuff with you. So let me give you um, just one thing. Again, I want, to, I want you to keep it simple. Um, you just want to bring some type of um, collapsible bowl. You see the little uh, carabiner there on the end of the bowl. That'll clip your belt loop. And that's really the easiest thing. You got other ones that are like cloth. You can roll them up and put, put them in your pocket, um, but keep a, keep a bowl. But people try to do, and it, it's a little bit frustrating when I see people do this, they got a bottle of water, right? They didn't get one for their dog. They got their bottle of water and now they're going, okay, what do I do? And they, they're trying to pour water in their hand and their dog is licking this, this, the, this wet palm. That, that's that's the con <laughs> that's the, that's all they're getting is a little bit of that little water that's in the, the, the oops, hold on, in the palm of your hand. That they need water in a bowl. They need water. They don't need a wet palm. Pour the water into a bowl. Bring a collapsible bowl. Go on, as much as I hate to tell you, go to Amazon because I'm not a fan of Amazon. Go to Amazon, order a couple of these bowls, have them on hand, always carry them in your car, always have them available. Keep them in your backpack and you pack water for yourself and you pack water for your dog. Water for yourself and water for your dog. Not just share the one bottle and think it's going to be okay. You um, you need definitely you need to have some water for your dog. All right, but put it in a bowl. Don't put it in your hand. There's other things that people have. Uh, there's a Lixit kind of for a water bottle. That's okay too. But again, I don't know that you're going to get enough water to your dog. The amount of water that your dog probably needs to be rehydrated. Again, your dog is panting. The dog is developing steam and a, a mist inside this kind of, that's what's cooling them off. Their dog doesn't sweat. Your dog needs to have rehydration and your dog needs water in a bowl, not in your hand, not a Lixit from a little, a little water bottle. Get a bowl. Did I say that enough? Get a bowl. <laughs> Take that with you. Uh, I know I'm obnoxious when I get on, on a ramp rampage like this. Uh, hey, June, nice to see you. Former employee of Falco Canine Academy. Fill a bucket with concrete, then fill uh, uh, then fill. Well, that's another good idea. It's a good idea. Uh, with big dogs, that probably uh, works. But again, um, that's great. I'm not saying that that's not a bad idea. I think that's a good idea. Um, uh, another thing is what I have done in kennels is that I take that carabiner you saw on that bowl. If I show you this bowl again, you take this uh, the little carabiner, but probably a stronger one than that. You take and drill a hole in the top of the bucket and then take the carabiner and put it on the chain link fence of the, of the kennel. And that way it can't tip over. It just kind of sits there and it, 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 it won't tip over. That's another thing that you can do to keep it in there. But good idea, June, nice to see you again. Um, wonder what's going on with you. I'm glad to hear from you and see you. That's awesome. All right, so... And then Amy says it was 95 degrees and sunny today. And I saw someone out running with their dog. The poor dog was obviously overheated. It happens fast, people. I'm telling you, I know that you think this is OK. You think, well, it's a dog, right? The dog can probably run farther than I can. There's a lot of things happening here with the dog. The dog is leashed to you and you are keeping it out in the sun. Dogs on their own will find shade. Have you ever played ball with a dog and it begins overheated and it gets the ball and it goes to the tree underneath the tree and lays underneath the shade? It's, it's overheated. It has the option of doing that and is trying not to get overheated. It's trying to take the direct sun off of the, the fur. So the dog will do that. But when you are running or walking, you in general are not running from under tree to under tree to under tree. You're walking out in the sun and the sun is beating down on the dog while he's panting. She's panting. And again, the dog are, are, are barefooted and they're walking on the, the hot surface. One of the quickest ways to cool a dog off is putting their paws in cool water. So you can you can imagine that the opposite is happening with having their paws on the hot surface of the of the of the cement or the asphalt or even dirt where they're running.
Uh, and so understand that, that that heating process is also heating their body. Just like if you were to put their paws in cool, cold water, that would also cool them off. It, it goes both directions again. And then the sun on top of their, their fur. All right. Uh, let's get back to the, um, what's that? I already said this probably, but, but yeah, don't forget a portable bowl. All right. Um, and now I want to talk about, like Amy said, hot surfaces, beware and mindful that your dog is walking on bare feet. Oh, yeah, like Amy just said, oh, these are the things that just, just kill me. You can see the way a dog is walking. Sometimes their, their, their step is a little bit different than normal. They're, they're trying, they're dancing on the hot asphalt and the person just walking along and you can see a dog going like this, like, shoot, I get they got, you, the leash is keeping them from trying to get underneath the car to get some coolness or get underneath a tree or something like that. You got to be aware. I'm telling you people, this is what we're going to find during the summer. I'm sure is people that had probably not had dogs before. They're not mindful. They've been able to get away with this kind of stuff through the winter time. And I'm not telling you they don't like their dogs or love their dogs. They're just simply unaware and not thinking about the dog, what he's going through or she's going through by walking in the summertime outside as you are running errands or going shopping, going hiking, going for a walk or what have you, that the surface they are walking on can sometimes be so stinking hot. It, it, I, when I trained the dogs for Disneyland, uh, because uh, at Disneyland, it wasn't like a patrol dog on patrol where the dog was an air conditioned car. At Disneyland, the dogs were walking around amongst the visitors at Disneyland. Many of the surfaces at Disneyland are, are cement, asphalt, and some are painted. The painted asphalt, if it was like 100 degrees, the painted asphalt was somewhere in the neighborhood of 125, maybe hotter, 130 degrees. That the, the painted surface was so darn hot, there, there was no way a dog could walk on it. It was so darn hot. The asphalt, probably the same. Pretty pretty hot, not as quite as hot as the painted surface, but very hot. We used to have uh, temperature gauges that we could point at the surface and it would tell us how hot it was. It was extremely hot. So one of the ideas, and I wanna, I wanna share this with you because I want you to understand that you may be thinking, well, I'm just gonna buy some, uh, um, some shoes for my dog, some nylon uh, shoes that you can find on the internet. Uh, don't do that because it doesn't really help. I know that you think it would. I'm going to put some socks on my shoes, on my dog. Uh, they're made out of, uh, uh, not vinyl. What am I looking for? Nylon. They're made out of nylon. And so you have these nylon booties, even some of them that are um, have a little bit of rubber protection on them. What we noticed and what we found is that as the dogs walk, now it'll protect their feet for just a little while, but pretty, pretty soon, especially if the dog stops, the, the, the shoe gets heated up. And now you're essentially cooking the foot inside of that shoe. We began to test the, the heat inside the shoe and it too was almost a hundred and something degrees. So you may be thinking you're doing well, I'll just get them some booties while we go for these walks. I'm telling you that the booties are fine for sharp edges and that kind of surface, but for heat, they're really not protecting the dog like you think that they would. So just understand. Now there's some other booties that maybe have a, a, a thicker sole, and some type of liner on the inside, those may be better. Uh, but now again, now you're having a dog walk with these little shoes and they, they look really funky and you can try that if that's something that you feel like you really need to do. But um, consider this, not taking your dog <laughs> when, when it's 90 to 100 something degrees, go for your run on your own. Your dog doesn't necessarily need to go on that run because it's 100 degrees. Don't think, well, I'm going for a run and I, I love my dog, I want my dog with me. I need him for protection. Well, you might kill your dog uh, as you're out on that walk because it's going to be so hot. It's going to be so uncomfortable. The dog, the dog's going to hate you for it. Uh, not necessarily, but the dog just is suffering. The dog is suffering because the surface is so hot. So be, be very careful when you're making these decisions or wait until the evening. Do it early in the morning or do it late in the evening after the, the, the ground has had time to cool off. It takes a little while for the ground to cool off after a hot summer day. So just be again, be mindful that you have to wait until it gets really cool. In the early morning hours would probably be best, uh, but be very, very careful going during the heat of the day uh, when you can avoid it. Hey, Marie, nice to see you. Thanks for that about the booties. Had no idea and was considering. Yeah, you, you, there are. I'm sure there are a couple. Uh, I mean, there may be a brand out there, uh, and I didn't have time to really look and see if there was a new brand out here. But we tried it with the dogs over at Disneyland, and it what it, we found that it wasn't uh, helpful. Uh, the dogs were still dancing around. We gave it a shot, and they bought a bunch of them. I don't know how much they spent. Maybe like. 500 bucks on, on these booties and we said let's go and there's a, the area if you've ever been there uh, the area between Disneyland and California Adventure that whole surface is painted different colors 
right? That's the hottest part of the, of the, for the dogs. That's the hardest part of the park, hottest part of the park and walking across just from Disneyland to California adventure on a 90 degree day, the surface again, I, I want to say it was like 130 degrees. I don't know, but it was really hot. And we said, let's just try these booties. We put, we got halfway across and the dogs started doing the same thing. And they're like trying to get the boots off because now the boots were burning their, their pads. Now, again, it could have been those booties, but I'm telling you that the nylon surely did not provide protection. Some of those booties are simply just nylon, um, like socks that went on the dog's uh, feet. Uh, and again, they do make some that have like a little rubberized, uh, like a sole, like of a regular shoe. Those can provide a little bit more protection, but again, they, they're small. And so that heat begins to, to cook their little tootsies in there and uh, they're not as protective as you might think that they are. This is where uh, simply we had, they had to learn to carry their dogs on the surface. And so when they were going from Disneyland to California Adventure, they'd scoop the dog up and they'd walk the dog, carrying the dog across that surface and then we'd take the dog to the next shaded area. And the reason being is because there was no really shaded area to go from one part of the park to the other part. So we had to do that. And so I'm telling that story is because you may have to do the same thing. You may have to just simply pick up your dog. If you get yourself in a situation where your dog is dancing, you can see your dog dancing like he's like, and he's looking around like, I got to find some shade, scoop your dog up and carry him and uh, take him to the next place where the dog can get cooled off in the shade. All right. So uh, I just want to go back to this area up here really quick. And this is the, some of the most important parts of this whole thing is that um, do not depend on a bowl of water in the backyard for a dog during the summer months. Get something else, a Lixit, a kiddie pool that you're constantly cleaning out and, and putting fresh water in and keeping it uh, available for your dog so he can stay cooled off. <clears throat> uh, but something that has a, a, a lim an unlimited amount of water the dog can have access to, um, but don't depend on a bowl uh, to be that thing. Uh, always keep a water available uh, and use that Lixit in that shot. Uh, the next thing is that whenever you go out with your dog, no matter what you're doing, if you're going out for a walk, if you're going shopping, if you're going to um, hiking, whatever it may be, bring water for you and bring water for the dog. Water for you and water for the dog and consider how long you're going to be gone. How big a bottle does it need to be? You may be a little bit more uncomfortable because you have to carry a little bit more water, but you've decided to go on this walk. You are you. The dog is depending on you. Um, I, I also see people put uh, backpacks on their dog and, and now have their dog carry their own water. What? <laughs> now your dog is now working harder with a vest on in the heat on the hot surface. Again, uh, that's I'm not a big fan of that. I've seen it. I know people that do it. Uh, and again, I've, I've said, you know, that's not really that good of an idea. Your dog, it, 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 that's not how your dog was built. He's not a horse. Uh, he's not a camel. He's a dog. Um, uh, you carry the water for your dog. You made the decision to take your dog out with you. You made the decision to go out on this walk with your dog during the summer. Make sure you take care of your dog. Your dog needs to be taken care of and he's depending on you to bring the water. So bring water for both you and your dog um, and make sure that you bring um, the bowl. Make sure you bring the bowl for your dog. Don't depend on the palm of your hand. It's simply not enough water for your dog when you're out out and about. Let's see, we got another comment here. Amy, maybe you could invent some cooling flip-flops for dogs. <laughs> maybe, maybe. They, it, I don't think dogs like things between their toes. Have you ever really, I mean, I mean, they, I'm sure dogs don't like things between their toes. They don't even like their toenails clipped, much less things between their toes. But uh, that's a great idea, though, Amy. Um, Amy, any other things that I've missed that you want to bring up? You brought up uh, obviously the great things because you and I were thinking alike on the on the uh, the banners. Anything I missed in regard uh, to um, the summer months coming up? Again, I wanted to just kind of give a, a basics to to consider um, and protect people and protect their dogs from them. Oops, sorry, um, and. Um, I think that we covered that, but I'm going to give Amy uh, some time to, to come up with anything or June. Is there anything else you have? You had, that was a great idea with a bucket, uh, with the concrete at the bottom. Really good idea, um, that keep that thing weighted down. Again, I, I have a, a history of working with big German shepherds, Belgian Malinois, dogs like that. Uh, German shepherds have this really bad habit and even some Belgian Malinois, and I'm sure there's other breeds too, where they, they hit the water with their paws and they dig in the water. And those are the dogs that have almost often died of dehydration is the dogs that play with their water. They dig and dig and dig and they splash in the water and they tip their bowls over. They pick them up and, and throw them and that kind of stuff. And you would think that somebody that owns a dog that they know that they do that, that they wouldn't depend on the bowl. 
but yet they do. And again, people, and again, this isn't because they don't like their dog. It's, it's not that they are just horrible people. I know that we would probably call them horrible people after their dog had died, but um, because they didn't, you knew your dog did that. Why didn't you get something else for your dog? But people just sometimes don't think that way. I mean, people sometimes leave their kids in the car by accident. It's not that it doesn't, they're not murderers per se, and they're not horrible people. Uh, for instance, I, I, as a police officer, I can't tell you how many, how many times, um, uh, you know, in my career that a call that I would go on that somebody left their child in the car and the, the child died or was in, in critical condition as we were rushing into the hospital because they just sometimes get distracted. And that's what I'm talking about. When you take your dog out in the cars in particular, that you, you, you have good intentions. Your intentions are, I'm just going to go run inside really quick and then I'll be right back and my dog will be okay. The problem is, is when you get distracted and things happen and you go, oh, you know what? Oh, the dry cleaners is right down there. Let me just walk a little a couple doors down to the dry cleaners and there's 10 people in line or what have you, right? There's like, oh, always these things that can come up and that's when dogs die, that's when children die uh, in the summer months when, when they're left in the car. It's the, because people get distracted and they forget and uh, bad things can happen really quickly. So uh, again, I'm not saying that any of the people that had experienced a dog dying, I've had police officers' dogs die in police cars. Uh, of overheated. Some of them have been arrested and have done jail time. There's one in New York, a uh, female police officer, canine handler. Um, she uh, left her dog. Maybe it was in San Diego is one of the two, but I, there's more than one. There's two police officers who knew that their air conditioner had a problem or something like that. And they didn't service it. They kept thinking they were going to service it probably, or they were going to, and they kept procrastinating. And then the summer months came and then they left their police dog in the car and then the air conditioner quit and the dogs died. And one of them, if I if I remember correctly, did a little bit of time in jail uh, for the death of her dog. Uh, same thing with a police officer, I believe it was in San Diego, uh, was, uh, was charged with animal cruelty. So um, these things happen, uh, summer months. I wanna make you aware of them. If you know anybody that needs to see this video, uh, anybody that just got a dog this year, say, hey, watch this video. He's talking about uh, summer months and it might be something you, you wanna really consider. And people who go to PetSmart, PetGo, get on Amazon, get Elixit, get a, um, you know, a portable water bowl um, and some other gadgets, maybe a kiddie pool, and they won't have to experience a dead dog that they love and just simply, for whatever reason, just didn't take those things into consideration. All right, June says, um, oh, here we go, uh, Amy first. And it's not a good idea to shave some, oh my gosh, thank you, that's, <laughs> Thank you. Amy's 100% correct here. It's not a good idea to shave some long haired dogs to try to keep them cool. It is the craziest thing. I've seen that too, uh, way more often than I would, than I, I want. I, I thought it was just a California thing. Uh, their coat can actually protect them from the heat. They, the, the fur is there to protect them from the heat. Not only is the fur there to protect them from the cold, the fur is there to protect them from the heat. It provides a protection from the heat. It's like um, uh, insulation. It's insulation from the heat. The heat's uh, you know, coming down on their coat, it's providing a barrier between the direct sunlight and their skin. And so exactly what Amy's saying, do not, I, I see people shave their dogs all the time. I go, what? and then they take their dogs out for walks and I'm going, but your dog, you shaved the fur, you shaved the protection off. Why do you put a long sleeve shirt on when you go out in the sun? Like people would say, well, you put a long sleeve shirt out in the sun, isn't it hot? No, I'm using it to protect my skin from the direct sunlight. Same thing with dogs um, and uh, and cool. One other thing you're reminding me, Amy, is that black dogs, dark brown black dogs, people will wet them down with a hose and not give them shade to be protected. If you don't, that the sun now coming down on that dark fur, the black fur will now heat that water up that's on their coat because now it's stuck in the smaller fibers of the um, the undercoat. The undercoat is, uh, is the protection, is like the, uh, the insulation that stays wet. The surface of the coat gets dry. The undercoat stays wet. And when a black dog is, uh, um, is absorbing the heat, it begins to heat that water that's in the undercoat and your dog will now, it will now get even hotter. So again, we think we're doing the right thing by uh, uh, wetting down a, a black dog with this water, but you also have to give them shade. Do not let them stay out in the sun because you will cook that dog, boil their boil the little dog uh, because you, you're thinking you're doing the right thing, but in fact, you're actually making it difficult. Make sure they have shade. All right, uh, I have a small, cheap backpack full of dog stuff. <laughs> awesome, keep it ready to roll. It's kind of your go bag, right? You wanna keep your go bag full of water. Um, I was gonna talk about electrolytes and uh, Pedialyte. Pedialyte, uh, let me talk about that after I look at a couple more of these comments. 
I have a water spigot. My dog won't drink out of a bowl. Awesome. Water spigot is fantastic. Uh, the bucket I use, uh, five gallon buckets outside in two areas, including water inside with doggy door. Outstanding. Water, water, water. Dogs need water. Uh, just like us, we need water. Uh, last thing, uh, Pedialyte is sometimes uh, one of those things that you think that you should give your dog when they are dehydrated, dehydrated or overheated. My advice, it doesn't hurt to have Pedialyte on hand. Always have Pedialyte. It's, it's important that I think we have Pedialyte often on hand just because we never know when we're going to get dehydrated and we need some Pedialyte to kind of get those electrolytes back into our body. It's not a bad idea to keep elect, uh, Pedialyte on hand, um, a, uh, the type that doesn't have a flavor probably for the dog, the clear version that's just like a water flavor. Um, but one of the things that People will think is that if they give their dog the Pedialyte, that now they don't have to take the dog to the vet. What I would say is that if you're going to use the Pedialyte, use it as a means to give your dog some uh, safety between taking them to the vet. If your dog is dehydrated to the point where you think they need Pedialyte because the elasticity of their skin is gone, the, um, the white when you push on their gums is not coming back quickly, your dog is lethargic and, and really can't catch their breath. I've seen it. I, I, I've seen it enough times to know what it looks like when your dog is way overheated and um, you can't seem to cool them down. You need to get them to the vet. I would use Pedialyte not as a solution to dehydration and being overheated, but as a, as a means of giving them some comfort and giving them more time between taking them from your home or wherever, wherever you're at to the veterinarian's office. Do not give them Pedialyte and think they're okay. Give them Pedialyte as you're taking them the, to the veterinarian's office. You understand that? So I, I'm not going to give you advice that you just have Pedialyte, you give it to them and they'll be fine. No, give them Pedialyte, but it's as you're going to the veterinarian's office, right? So it's like it's like on a uh, somebody who's cut themselves. You're going to put a bandage and put direct pressure on a bad, bad cut that's bleeding that needs to be sewn so that you can get them to the doctor so they can get taken care of. You just don't want them bleeding out on the way. Same thing with a dog with Pedialyte. You want to give them Pedialyte to keep them at least, uh, give them some more time and, and maybe get them a little bit more comfortable as you are taking them to get, uh, you know, more professional first aid and get some IVs in them and get professionally taken care of a, by a veterinarian. Uh, one last thing when it comes to Pedialyte is you, um, it's recommended from what I remember not to give dogs that are vomiting. If your dog is so dehydrated and now they're vomiting, because that will happen, is that on top of the vomiting, you don't want to give them Pedialyte. It actually can make it worse. That's what I remember. If anybody knows anything different, make sure and let me know. But uh, last word on the streets was that uh, it, it, when it comes to the point where the dog is vomiting, uh, then refrain from the Pedialyte, that it actually could make the vomiting worse. Um, but again, don't give Pedialyte thinking you fix the problem. Uh, it's just a means of getting you to the vet so you can get more care. All right. Anything else? I'm going to give Amy and June. You guys have been great. Maureen, if there's anything else uh, uh, that you have to add to the to the show, um, that would be great. All right. So just um, just be mindful. Understand where you're going, uh, where the closest vet is. You know, there's um, something that we do in law enforcement is anytime that we're serving a search warrant. Uh, or anything like that. The one thing that we always consider as we get the search warrant, as we get the team together to go, we say, okay, from that location where we're serving the search warrant, where's the closest hospital? Just in case something happens. We always, because sometimes we may need to throw either the suspect or one of us into a car and take them to the hospital. It doesn't hurt to, to go uh, onto the internet and uh, where you're hiking, understand where the veterinarian, the closest either 24 hour vet office or emergency vet office or just a veterinarian is, where is that at? and have that uh, address available in your phone um, and just to make it a habit. Make it a habit to say, you're, I'm gonna go to um, Angeles National Forest and uh, in this location, where's the closest vet that if I need to go, I can go. I have, a, I have had dogs eat, you know, we've had, uh, what was it, um, a boxer. And I'm not sure how this happened, <laughs> but the boxer somehow breathed in some of those weeds, you know, with the pickies on them. I'm not sure even what, what you call it. It's, it wasn't foxtails or anything like that because foxtails are another thing, which I'll get to in one second. As you're on this hike, you know, you're, you're, hydrate, you're doing everything right. You're hydrating your dog and doing much other stuff. And then they suddenly get into some cactus or they get into some spiky thing that they decide that they think is edible and it gets lodged in your throat you're going to need to take them to the vet. So it never hurts to know where the closest vet is when you're going somewhere with your dog to go for a hike, go for a long walk, go look at a waterfall somewhere, go down and, and uh, you know, go to some location where maybe you've not been before. Um, it doesn't hurt to know where the closest vet is at the dog park. If you're going to a dog park that's not near your home where you normally, your vet is normally close by, 
wherever that dog park is, know where the closest veterinarian's office is to that dog park because anything can happen. You need a quick path uh, and, a, and a location where you can take your dog quickly so they can get taken care of uh, immediately. So uh, make that part of your routine. With today's phones, with smartphones, you can just um, uh, can program it into your phone so that it's the next location. Then you just hit where that is and, and you're on your way to, to get your dog some help when they need it right away. All right. So uh, one other tip for you is to uh, locate the closest vet to where you're going. All right. There was um, Amy says, always be careful with brachycephalacla breeds <laughs> yes i can never say that never been able to say that but be careful with those breeds um uh, there you know there are those breeds I, and um, i'm just going to go in general uh, amy brings up a really good point know your breed uh, I've, I've done shows uh, on this, probably four or five shows on this over the years. And that is knowing the breed that you have. Is your breed a dog that you're going to go take out on a hike? There's some breeds that I would not ever take out on a hike. Um, just understand what your breed is uh, and what you can uh, uh, do with them. Not every German Shepherd breed, not every um, uh, Labrador Retriever breed can swim. I've I've no I've had a couple Labrador retrievers. You think that they were they were um, um, I don't know dachshunds. <laughs> I throw I throw a tennis ball in the pool and it's a Labrador retriever and they look at the pool like what you want me to go in there and then you take them in and they're, they're like they're 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 saying rescue me I can't swim so just because it's a lab also doesn't mean it can swim understand your breed so whether it's the the Brooklyn breed uh, that Amy brings up there. Or it's uh, another breed. Understand your your breed. Can they do it? Any type of dog that has that smashed in face um, has trouble breathing and, and cooling off and keeping themselves cool. So be careful about a dog that has that or a smashed face <laughs> that has trouble with uh, their respiratory system. There are certain breeds that we were horrible. Uh, the human uh, the, the the human who uh, bred certain breeds that cannot breathe were horrible. Why would you do that? Why would you breed dogs? They cannot breathe. I don't know why they would do that, but that's what they did. And so that's that's what you don't you don't want to take that dog, uh, you know, on a long hike. Probably best to leave your English bulldog at home when you go running or hiking. Absolutely. Um, you try, you know, going for a jog with your nose plugged and uh, a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> and see how you like it. That's like taking those dogs um, out for a run when you really shouldn't be doing that. So know, know what your dog is um, able to do and not able to do. And enjoy them for who they are. You know, if it's a lap dog that you got, enjoy the dog as a lap dog. Don't try to make him into a hiking dog when there's no there, there's no way that he should be out there hiking with you. All right. And 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 some Malinois, although they can be lap dogs, you know, they, they need to get out and run and have some fun out hiking and at dog parks and that kind of stuff. So feel free to take those dogs out. Just make sure you follow some of these directions, these, um, these really important things that you need to do. All right. Hope this has been helpful. It's nice being back to you on uh, Falco Canine Academy, Falco Canine Dog Talk. Uh, and uh, I got another show that we're going to be talking about. And that is uh, later on this week. Uh, I'm going to be talking about um, things you can do with your dog that isn't necessarily training. There are certain things that people can get frustrated with, whether it's a dog or a cat, right? That that you go, oh, this dog is driving me crazy. If I could, can you just train my dog not to do this thing? And I've, I've taken a few of these calls and it's cost me a lot of money because I say, well, why don't you just do this? And they go, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about some subjects that have to do with how to live with a dog that's frustrating you that doesn't require dog training. I know that's probably not going to make Amy happy or some other people uh, in the dog training world, but uh, you can actually charge for this. I think that I, that I found a way to charge people for advice. Oh, I know how to fix that, but uh, it'll take a home visit and the home visit is $250. And so when I get there, I'll show you how to do it. And it has zero to do with dog training. All right. So the next show will have to do with how to how to deal with dogs uh, that frustrate you, um, and, and again, even cats, without dog training. All right, my friends, we love you guys. Have a great Sunday. Thanks for watching. Again, share this with your friends who have have dogs, and um, let them know that this is something they uh, might want to watch, especially if they're humans that like to get out and are very active people. Uh, this may be an important show for them to see. All right. Sorry, just looking for the right button uh, to click on. All right, my friends, take care. Talk to you later. Bye.